If you support me on Patreon, I'll love you forever. Finally, one person will love you. Weekly bonus content, early access, and more when you support The Habit at patreon.com slash doseofbuckley. Ah, politics and commerce. From liberals not wanting to eat Chick-fil-A because they were giving money to anti-gay charities, to Republican leaders calling for a boycott on Coca-Cola because the company voiced their opposition to new voting laws in Georgia. A lot of purchasing decisions in the U.S. seem to be based around people's political affiliations. This doesn't surprise me because everything people do seems to be based around their political affiliations these days. It's some sad shit. We're gonna get to a point where you'll see someone eating a pizza by folding the slice in half and go, oh, that's a total right-wing move. You're one of them. And right now, someone's going, nah, pizza folding? That'd be a lib move because the right never folds. But from a certain standpoint, it works to take advantage of people's stupid belief that they are their political leanings. Pandering makes money. It's why every company during Pride Month slaps a rainbow on their logo somewhere. Or you got Ikea selling hideous couches to gay people, and I guarantee someone bought one because they thought, Finally, a couch for me! When every couch is for you, it's a couch. They're all shaped for humans to plop their fat asses on and watch The Mandalorian. Oops. Yeah, you can't watch The Mandalorian anymore. The left can't watch it because they kept all the Gina Carano scenes in, and the right can't watch it because they cancelled her. But not everything can be all things to all people, and so, if you can build up a loyal group of people who will not only buy your stuff, but become brand loyalists, who will defend the honor of your product like it's their own mother, that can often earn you just as much or more money than being well known amongst a large population who is relatively apathetic to your product, that could take it or leave it. Like Pepsi, which I think 70% of their sales come directly after a waitress says, we don't have Coke, is Pepsi okay? And so, a young man by the name of Eric Finman has decided to take this approach, marketing a phone specifically to Trump supporters, who are as bad as Toronto Maple Leaf fans for still supporting a loser while making up excuses for why they aren't winning. Introducing the Freedom Phone. Yes, the Freedom Phone is a free speech and privacy first smartphone with an uncensorable app store called the Patriot Store. They claim it has no location tracking and no keyboard tracking. We'll get to that in a second. And it comes preloaded with your favorite apps like Parler, DuckDuckGo, OAN, and Newsmax. Not just making America great, but also making a great phone. <laughs> it says this right on the website. And get this. Freedom could be yours for only $499.99 US. Listen, freedom isn't free. And you wouldn't want it to be, because you know who wants things to be free? Commie liberals. Ah, uh, you know, except for free speech. I mean, they, of course, they don't want that. Only we want that. I, I'm, I'm so confused. America! Oh, look, it's got an American flag and jets as the background. Yes, this is the phone for me. So, here's what the phone actually is. It's a Chinese phone from Yumi Digi you can buy from Alibaba for around $125. This has been confirmed by Finman. He said that the phone was manufactured by Yumi Digi because we found a horrible truth. The US at scale is not capable of making a phone. But claims it's not manufactured in mainland China. No, instead, it's manufactured in Hong Kong, which, I don't know if you guys know this, I know Americans aren't great at geography, but Hong Kong is a part of China. You know, that place MAGA supporters hate right now because they created a virus that took away our freedom. The company's headquarters is in Shenzhen. Maybe they have a plant in Hong Kong, but Trump supporters, just so you know, this is a Chinese phone. Finman says, we ended up finding an incredible manufacturer with the free and freedom-loving people of Hong Kong, and that they've replaced any chips or internals that didn't meet their security analysis. Like, say, the infrared temperature checker that comes standard on the Umi Digi A9? Imagine if you bought a phone that could take your temperature? What might it be using that data for, huh? to try and keep you out of baseball games, which are American, because the phone's telling people that I've got the Kung Flu? 
Well, don't worry, because they've supposedly got that out of there for you. Assuming that they are actually replacing parts, and not just literally buying a bunch of Chinese phones, installing some modified version of Android and some apps, turning off location services, sticking a label on it, and selling it to you for $375 more than the actual phone retails for. I mean, no one would do that to one of their fellow Americans, would they? And it is just a modified version of Android. Android is relatively open source, you can do what you want with it, but just so you know, Android was funded by Google. If you are truly so paranoid about big tech, you should know that Android was commercially funded by Google. And let's talk about the so-called security. First off, the uncensorable app store, the Patriot app store. They say they won't ban any apps? None whatsoever? Does this mean there's no vetting process? I mean, because that would be un-American after all. That'd be censorship. So, anyone could upload any app that does anything, and these guys will just let it be on there. You don't see where that could be a problem? Never mind the obvious stuff, like, you know, shit for kitty diddlers, but someone makes a program called The Wall that gives your phone extra protection, and you go, Oh yeah, bald eagles and titties, I gotta have The Wall on my phone to keep those immigrant viruses out of it. And it's actually just grabbing all your data and infecting your phone with malware, but it'd be against freedom to ban that app. The thing about our phone doesn't track your keyboard, that's just fear-mongering. It'd be like McDonald's going, our burgers aren't made of 100% cow shit, unlike someone's Burger King. Your phone doesn't log your fucking keystrokes, not without you downloading a keystroke logger. But what about the fact that it's still on a 4G network using SIM cards and requires you to use a cell carrier? So you are being tracked anyway. AT&T, Verizon, all of them track all your calls, your texts, when you make calls, they bounce off cell towers. Anything that goes through their network likely gets logged. Some carriers do store text messages, regardless of what phone you've got. And at the very least, they'll have the data that says, this person sent a text message to this person on this day. They advertise that the phone has no location tracking. So remember that this goes both ways. No GPS. So if you thought things like being able to use your phone to get directions was handy, that won't work. And if you lose your phone, you can't track it like find my iPhone. And then guess what? All your data that you have put on that phone is in someone else's hands. And I guarantee you made the lock screen 1234, didn't you? And if you were using it for something illegal and the police confiscate the phone, they'd find a way in. They don't need your lock screen codes. Or what about if you're using a Wi-Fi network? If you're using a public Wi-Fi network, now that information's trackable, and even with your private Wi-Fi at home, you have an IP address, the phone makes no mention of VPNs or anything like that, so there's more ways to find you if you're doing something you think people won't want you doing. And CNET reminds us that Google routinely keeps Android updated with security patches and whatnot, but that's only on their official release. So, will Freedom OS get those updates? Only if someone actually plans to support this thing, and currently, they've made no mention of updates. They claim there's a piece of software on the phone called Trust that will help you understand the security of your device and warn you about possible threats. No further information. You literally have to trust that this software will actually do anything. Oh, but Candace Owens says it's a good phone. Candace Owens, who, by the way, in her own video, admits to not knowing anything about the Android OS, and then goes on to show how she installed Instagram, owned by Facebook, the big evil tech company that banned Trump. <laughs> yeah, that's who you should take phone buying advice from. All the rhetoric aside, it's also just a shit phone. 4 gigs of RAM, a 1.8 gigahertz processor, and 64 gigs of storage in 2021? This is comparable to the Samsung Galaxy 7, released in 2016. Every other current phone on the market blows this out of the water, and most of them you can just get as part of a monthly plan. They don't cost $500 US. Fact is, if you buy this, you're paying $500 because you're the type of sucker who buys things based on your political affiliation. Because it says freedom right on it, and I believe in freedom. Or 
you're paying $500 because you're so bad with tech and you've pushed away all your loved ones who could help you with it. So you basically have to pay a Bitcoin millionaire to install a program for you. You want Parler on your current phone? Their website gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to download it. DuckDuckGo? It's on the Google Play Store. Same with OAN and Newsmax. Don't want GPS on? You can turn off location services on your phone. Now you can't be tracked. You can also turn on airplane mode on your phone to stop it from communicating with any cell towers. Or you could just turn your phone off when you're not using it. Now it can't track you. It can't hear you talking about your diaper fetish and then start showing you ads for Huggies. No one can hack into it. As if anyone's hacking into your phone. Like the Russians will be able to bring America to its knees once they know what your wife wants you to pick up on the way home from work. It's the most secure state your phone could possibly be in and stops you from sharing your dumb thoughts on Twitter. It's a win-win. So, when it comes to the Freedom Phone, I say, let freedom ring. Then let freedom go to voicemail, and then never get back to freedom. And if you walk by freedom on the street and freedom's like, oh, uh, hey, like, you know, why didn't you call me back? I, I thought we had something. Just tell freedom, I'm sorry, it's not me, it's you.